Welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet channel and today I'm sharing with you the fourth and final pattern in the Cotton Grass Washcloth series. Now this pattern is suitable for two functions, probably more, but the ones that I use it for as either as a soap saver bag or as a bag to store my face scrubbies in. In the description box you can find a link to the video and the written pattern for the face scrubbies and of course to all the patterns that are included in this event. This is a good sized bag, you can easily fit a bar of soap in there and it just means that you won't waste as much soap as you're using it but it is also the perfect bag to wash your used face scrubbies in too because they fit absolutely, oh they're an end there Fiona, oh no it's just a scrap of yarn, oh I thought I hadn't woven an end in but this fits in absolutely perfectly to wash the bag and your face scrubbies all at the same time. You can also fold up your washcloth that fits inside here too. The back scrubber does not, but that's strong enough to be washed on its own. So together today we are going to make this mesh bag, which you can use, as I said, for either a face, um, to hold your face scrubbies or as a soap saver as well. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on one of my pattern tutorials or videos again. Let's find out the materials we're going to be using and get started in this pattern. If you've been following along for this series, you'll know that I've run out of Aran White Cotton. So I'm using two strands of Cotton DK and I'm using my paint box yarns cotton here. This is the same as a size three yarn, but I am holding two strands together and this colour is paper white. You notice that I have made a string or a tie for my bag and that is being made in my contrast colour that I've used throughout this collection which is the rosy pink shade number 622 and the reason that number starts with a different number is because this is a different weight yarn this is an Aran or a worsted weight and a size 4. Throughout this series we've been using our 5mm crochet hook to make each of these patterns and we're doing the same again today. So gather all of your materials and let's get started. Now this bag is worked in the round by starting with the base of the bag and then we work up to create the pattern all the way around. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And we begin with a chain of 19. So we yarn over and pull through 19 times. Three, four, five, 17, 18 and 19. So we're going to begin by working into our second chain from the hook. Remember that this loop does not count as a stitch. We can't work into the first. So we're going to place a single crochet into that second chain from hook. So we just insert the hook, yarn over to bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the chains across. Try and avoid that big hole because you can see there's something coming out of it. So we've worked into it. So we're working one single crochet into each chain across to the last chain. So work one single crochet into each of your chains and I'll meet you at that last chain where we'll work together to make to, to fill that last chain. Once you've reached your last chain, we're going to work three single crochets into this last chain. So we're inserting and working three single crochets all into this last chain. I'm gonna find my tail, there we are. So that was one. That's number two, and we're reinserting for a third time. And I'm going to try and capture this knot under this stitch. Oh, I just did it. Wonderful. So we're going to work three single crochets into that last chain. And you'll find that you rotate your project automatically, ready to work the other side of our chain. You can see where these holes are, where we've worked the other stitches. And we're just going to work one single crochet into the other side of our chain all the way back down and I'm also going to work over my tail to bury that at the same time. So, that's... so we're working all the way back down to our last chain there on the other side of our chain and I'll meet you there in a moment. Once we've reached this final chain we're going to work two 
single crochets into that final chain. So that's one and two. And then we're going to join to that first single crochet that we made with a slip stitch, not a single crochet view. <laughs> and that marks the end of round one. So at the end of round one, you should have a stitch count of 38 single crochets. So count around, making sure you've got 38. So I have 38, thankfully. I hope you do too, because we're going to go straight into round two. Now we're going to start this round with a chain of four. So we yarn over and pull through four times. So that's one, two, three and four. Now this chain four counts as one double crochet and a chain one. So we're going to skip this stitch because our chain four is coming out of it. You can see that we've joined into this stitch. So we're skipping the next stitch and into the next stitch across, we're working a double crochet and a chain one. So we yarn over the hook. This is the stitch we've just chained out of. We're skipping this stitch. We're inserting our hook and bringing our third loop up. We yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two for our double crochet, and then we make a chain one. We're then gonna repeat this all the way around. So we skip the next stitch, yarn over, and ready to work a double crochet into the next stitch. That's our double crochet, make a chain one, and repeat all the way around. So we skip the next stitch, yarn over and work a double crochet into the next one after our skip stitch. You can see this is creating a really cute mesh. Make sure you've done that chain one and then we can skip the next stitch and work our double crochet into the next again. So continue to repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this round so that we can join and make sure we've done the right number of stitches. So when you reach back where your chain four was, we're skipping that next stitch and we're going to slip stitch to the chain three, well, the third chain out of our starting chain four. So we skip that next stitch, one, two, three, and we want to leave that other chain. So I'm just going to insert my hook underneath two loops of that remaining chain and slip stitch to join. And already you can see the basis of our bag. So for rounds three to 13, we're gonna be making a similar round that we've just done. So we start with that chain of four, one, two, three, and four. We're gonna skip the chain space and work a double crochet into the top of the double crochet from the previous round. So we're skipping our chain one space and inserting our hook into the top of our stitch to work a double crochet and then we chain one and we're repeating this all the way around. So we skip the chain three and work a double crochet in the top of the next stitch. Follow that with our chain one and skip. We're gonna repeat this all the way around, ready to join at the end of our round. So I'll meet you at the end of round three to work our join and then leave you to work rounds four through to 13. Remembering to make sure you've done that final chain one. We're slip stitching into that third chain. So one, two, and three. Make sure I pick up two loops and then slip stitch to join to make the end of our round. So we've done rounds one to three and we need to do rounds four all the way up to 13. So this first row of mesh is row two and we're doing a total of 13 rows. Get your 13 rows done and I'll meet you back so that we can fasten off and work our tie cord as well. I'll see you shortly. So once you've finished your final stitch of round 13, we're just going to make that final slip stitch into the top of that chain three. And then we can fasten off. Or oh, if I get the end sorted. And then we can just fasten off and then use our hook to pull that through. Oh, I made that a bit short. And uh, we can get those ends woven in and that completes the bag portion. So what we need to do is to create 
a tie that's going to cinch in the bag. That's what creates that fluted look. It's not a fancy stitch. It's just cinching the bag in using a tie. Now I'm going to work mine in my contrast colour. So I'm using my rosy pink and my five millimetre hook. And it is so simple. We are simply going to make a slip knot. Place it onto our hook. And make a chain of 80. So that's one, two, three, four, and 80. Now for continuing this row one, this one single row, we're simply going to work one single crochet into each chain across. Remember that this loop doesn't count. We can't work into that first loop. There's our first chain. You know what I'm going to recommend. I'd recommend flipping over your chain and working into these back bumps. There's that first back bump. We can't work into that. So this is our second one. So from the side, you can see there's a slight bump. We're just going to insert our hook under the back bump and work our single crochet as normal. Once you've done that first one, the second back bump is much more apparent. And we're just going to continue to work one single crochet into each of the back bumps across. So there's the normal side we work into. And we're just working under this back bump instead. And that's going to make a really nice finished tie. It's not going to look like we've just made a scrappy chain <laughs> we're going to have a really nice finished project now of course if you're confident you can just do 80 foundation single crochets and it will give you the same look but not a lot of people like doing foundation chains or chainless foundations should i say but if you are confident in doing it go ahead and do 90 single crochet foundation chains um, or you can use this technique to create the same look so you have the same edge on both sides. Go ahead and complete working back down your chain, placing one single crochet into each back bump across, and then we're ready to finish our projects. So I've just woven in my ends of my lovely big chain, and the only thing left to do, I won't weave that end in of course, is to place our string or our tie in place. So I would recommend kind of weaving it in and out of your third row down from the top. And you can see there's almost like a middle stitch. So I'm going to start by inserting around these every other stitch. So you're using the mesh to its full advantage, kind of weaving your tie handle, your tie bow, all the way through every other stitch. It looks super cute. I mean, you could use ribbon if you wanted to as well, whatever you've got to hand to make a really nice toe. Tie, not toe. You can use a ribbon even if you want to, instead of using the chain. Um, it just means from washing point of view, at least you know that the cotton that you've used for your bag will wash as well as your tie would. So continue to weave in and out of all of these stitches until you get back to the beginning. And you can either leave one empty, but then all you need to do is to make sure these are the same length and you're ready to create your bow. And as it cinches in, it creates that lovely kind of fluted top tuck those ends in and pretend we finished. I want to thank you so much for taking part in the Cotton Grass Crochet Along. It's been an absolute pleasure helping you create your own crochet spa set. I will see you in the next video.